Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if my face looks oily, it is. I put an oil on it. Honestly, because the foundation I'm using today is a very thick cream and yeah, I needed the oil to help kind of spread it. Anyways, that's beside the point. I ordered the new Victoria Beckham makeup and I just wanted to share with you guys because I got this and it's really beautiful. I have a, quite a bit of opinion-y things to say towards the beginning of this and then we're going to get into the makeup in a little bit. So hold tight for getting into the makeup. I did just wait to um, actually unbox it with you all. I didn't even open it yet. So whenever I saw the Posh Spice because let's be real, that's how I think of her because I'm in that age group, released a new makeup line. I was, you know, honestly, I didn't think much of it, but then I heard it was Clean Beauty and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. So I immediately got on the website. I saw that she had these kind of like shadow bricks that reminded me a lot of the Kevin Kwan palettes. They're like highlighter or they're bronzers or whatever. And I just thought they were really beautiful. So I immediately put it one of those in my basket and then I saw that they had some other their eye products and I put one of their kind of like potted whatever products in my basket and I just ordered them immediately because I saw Clean Beauty on there. Then a couple days ago I was just thinking because I was waiting for this order, how clean is this? Sometimes for me I don't get a lot of literature on brands and stuff. I have to do all the research and I just kind of saw Clean Beauty and thought like okay that's you know it's clean and we can't take things for face value. I think that's just worth saying, we just can't. And, well, I say that this is a non-toxic line of beauty. Yes, I looked up all the ingredients. I always start with the EWG, and I know that the EWG has gotten some criticism. I use them more as a guiding post, where I looked up all the ingredients through there, and then I just kind of read through their literature and kind of what each ingredient did. And none of them scored above a two or a th I think a two or a three at most. The reason I'm even talking about this is in doing that, I discovered that some of the ingredients were synthetic, which I'm cool with. I haven't really gotten on here ever and been like, oh my gosh, you know, synthetics are horrible. But at the same time, I was reading the kind of synthetics they were and it kind of got me thinking a little bit. A lot of the synthetics are plastic based, which I'm guessing they're using some form of a very microplastic in these cosmetics, which aren't really harmful to our health. But we have to remember at the end of the day, we're all washing our makeup off, hopefully. I hope you're doing that, please do. And all of that's going down our sink, right? So. I know that right now they're having a lot of issues in our waterway systems. They've actually discovered those plastics, those tiny microplastics are really attractive to fish and they eat them and then they end up inside the fish's body and it does some damage, right? So that's something I am just going to tell you guys. I'm not sure if I'm going to be the hugest advocate for that. I can't say that I'm perfectly zero waste or anything by any means, but I think we all need, I'm just trying to kind of start the conversation and start us thinking about this because honestly, this brand is what got me thinking about this. And this was the first brand I really researched anything on that. So I kind of feel bad that this has to be the brand where I talk about that, but because you know, I was reading all the ingredients and everything of this line. That's what made me really interested. So I don't know. This is just more a question, I guess, for my audience, for you guys. Do we consider something like this clean beauty? I wouldn't call it eco beauty. I wouldn't call it organic. I wouldn't call it natural. I would call it maybe clean or non-toxic, but I would not call it sustainable even just straight up just because those ingredients are going to break down and end up in our waterways and that's not necessarily a good thing and i'm sorry that this brand has to be kind of the brand again that i bring this up with because i'm sure i own makeup from other brands that have very similar ingredients to them um that i haven't questioned in the past just because i maybe just trust the brand's ethos or whatever but it's something getting more into sustainability will be a big part of my channel from now on just honestly starting with the victoria beckham line so i already purchased this and paid for it and it was already on the way to me so i am going to still review this so let's get into it let's talk about the makeup so after that kind of grim talk i guess um, I will say the branding is very, very beautiful. So you open this up. I'm actually kind of surprised that they use just a cardboard outer box because the inner box looks a lot more chic and nice. And then we got this card and it 
says Victoria Beckham Beauty. Thank you for supporting Victoria Beckham Beauty. I hope you love the products as much as I have loved creating them. Kisses VB, because I'm crazy, because I'm like, oh, did Victoria Beckham really write this? This is just printed on here. She did not write that. Because I was like licking the print to see if the ink moves. Yeah, that's printed on there. I'm that weirdo. Okay, and then they use this. This is, actually, this is, yes, I'm using my spit. This breaks down. So they use that sugar cane, I think that's what it is. So that is a plus of the product, is that this is not traditional styrofoam. This does break down in water. Just if you can see where that's disintegrated from my saliva, that's kind of cool. So that's a pro, definite pro of that. And then even the packaging said, uh, this packaging is made from sustainable materials. Learn more at victoriabeckham.com slash sustainability. So that's pretty, I mean, they are doing something good there. Just straight up, if we're comparing it to a traditional, more luxury line of makeup, that's awesome. A lot of the Guerlain, Lancome, um, YSL, they aren't doing all of that. So that's cool. And then we get this little bag that says Victoria Beckham Beauty, and it's wrapped again in this styrofoam -y stuff. Honestly, they kind of could have just not used this. That would have been even more sustainable because, yeah, I don't really see the need for that. Okay, so I got a smoky eye brick, and then I also got their lid luster. Um, what are we gonna do? I think I'll do one, I mean, we'll see. We'll open them up and play. Okay, so this is gorgeous. I'm going to do a close-up of this, but it just says Victoria Beckham. It's kind of this old school, I don't even know how you would describe this, just this opening that you press the button and then it goes up and then it has a mirror right there and it has all of the eyeshadows. So this is beautiful. I'm not, I mean, it is gorgeous. I'm not denying that fact. It's a lot more different than anything that we've seen in any of the clean brands. Um, even Kiara Wise. I'll say I actually think this is more beautiful than a Kiara Wise product just because it's different. I don't know. It's just really pretty to me. And it has this mirror on it. So this was $56. This is not a cheap line. It is a luxury line. One thing I mentioned, I actually feel like there are not a ton of luxury makeup lines in Clean Beauty and I feel like there's a lot of space for that to come into play in the future and in future brands because there's a market for it. Straight up there is. There's already people who are buying YSL, Sicily, um, I'm just trying to think. Any of the kind of department store lines, you're going to pay 56 bucks for something probably more. So I do think there is a space for these really beautiful products that are cleaner. Ooh, this is actually really pretty packaging as well. This is really glittery. And then it has this kind of posh spice cheetah print lid. So that's awesome. It's, it's beautiful. This stuff is gorgeous and I cannot deny that fact. And I wouldn't even try and pretend that it's not. This is the kind of product I don't even want to dive into because it is so beautiful. I'm going to though, um, I'm just going to use a little bit of concealer on my lids just as a base. I'm doing something different today and I'm just using the shadows uh, first and then I'm going to do my face makeup because I just didn't know how these shadows would wear, honestly. All right, so I'm just going to use this brown matte shade in my crease. This shade is pretty darn pigmented. It's blending out really nicely. This does have, uh, I think it was methicone in it, which is a silicone derivative. So that can oftentimes help a little bit. So the formulation of that is very lovely. I don't have a lot of fallout. That's why I didn't do my face makeup first. So I'm going to use this red shade on the back half of my lid. I kind of picked this tweed palette just because it it's kind of a nice fall palette. That's what I thought the colors. And I also thought it's just different than all of the other palettes I usually get. I usually go for things that are more warm toned, which this does have the brown and then this really big kind of gold shade, but the red and the purple kind of set it off a little bit. So I thought that was just kind of nice. And then I'm going to use the purple in the center of my lid. So that purple is not super pigmented. I've definitely used 
shades that are similar to this that are much more pigmented. So there's that. Yeah, that just, I tried two different brushes with that and it's just not, yeah, I don't really like that purple that much. Okay, and then on my inner corner, I'm going to use this sparkly gold shade. This one actually has a bit more fallout, just if you can see that right up there. All right, so that purple just, I was expecting kind of more from it and I tried it with a couple different brushes. The other shades look very nice. The other shades blended out very well as well and they were just more buttery. Just that purple, the payoff isn't very good. So I am going to go in with the Lid Luster just on top where I kind of tried to put the purple. So we're here, we're doing the thing. Yeah, so I'm a lot more impressed with the Lid Luster than I am the palette, honestly. I just think the Lid Luster is a lot different of a formulation than anything that I've tried. Okay guys, so I really do think that this Lid Luster is really pretty and just different. Um, let me finish out the rest of my makeup and then we'll kind of do a final thought. So now that all my makeup is done, I'll say I really do like that Lid Luster. That's probably like the shining star. The smoky eye brick, it's nice. I just think that that purple didn't give me what I wanted or what I was expecting really because it's kind of like the odd man out color, right? In this palette and that would be the one that I would expect to have some really vibrant pigmentation. It just did it. I would love to hear your thoughts on this brand. I would love to hear your thoughts on the sustainability aspect that I brought up at the beginning. I do think that it's great that they're doing some more sustainable things with their packaging. Even this is glass, so that's kind of interesting. They're doing better than pretty much all luxury makeup brands out there, but I did wanna bring up the topic of microplastics in makeup because I do think it's important and I think we need to have a discussion about it. So all, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a wonderful, wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world.